G'day. This week I'm going to answer that question a lot of people ask me and that is what's your favourite place in Queensland? Now I've covered three areas and not in any particular order and those top three are two of them are beaches and one of them was, is quite inland. So Airlie Beach which is in the Whitsundays is absolutely outstanding. You don't need to take a caravan or camper trailer or any of the camping gear. You can actually just rent houses and Airbnbs etc in Airlie Beach itself. And once you're there, you can go out on some of the cruises. They're unbelievably good. Or you can do little flights around it, which is what I did. And again, pretty awesome. So the other one is uh, another beach place is called Notch Point. Now it's one and a half hours south of Mackay or three and a half hours north of Rockhampton. The only thing is just watch out when you're going in there if you're taking a caravan, because some of the trees are quite narrow and getting through them is a bit tricky. And apart from going through those tricky trees, there's a couple of puddles there that have got rocks in it. You really kind of can't see it. So it's not overly dangerous, just, but just be aware. You just can't go flying through there. Once you're there though, it is, it's like a movie set. It is just so good. Outstanding, I'd say. And the third one is Winton. Now Winton is the place that had all the dinosaurs. And uh, the great thing about that is really family oriented and you can actually get in to check out the dinosaurs. They've got like a little area where they have volunteers just slowly getting the dust off the bones, the more bones they find. And with them, they then process it and take a little bit further. You also have the area where you can walk in and you have a tour and you got look where the, the uh, dinosaurs have got their big footprints and the little ones are coming in and all that sort of stuff. So that's pretty exciting. Now the honorary mentions is if you get a chance when you're in Queensland, you do need to hunt it out a bit, is go and see, uh, watch a, a cane fire. That is really fantastic. Part of the I had the honour of doing that. And with that, I also got a chance to jump on the truck and did the whole process of burning and then uh, harvesting and everything, which was really great. But if you do get a chance to see it, that'd be great. A little bit tricky to find because they don't tend to burn sugar cane much anymore. So watch out for that. Another honorary mention is Longreach. Longreach has the Qantas Museum and the other muse museum or place they have there is called the National, I always get this wrong, the National, um, oh, I'm just going to have to put it there. But it's really, really good. You can get into, it's all um, audio visual and you can check out the, like the little museum and part of that ticket also you watch this giant movie and it's so big on the screen that things that are happening here you literally have to turn your head to see other stuff there and you also go out to uh, check out a guy who does some horse riding and talks about um, uh, rustling, not rustling, but you know, all that horse stuff that they do up there. So they're the three great places in Queensland. Anywho, well, let's go.
have. Look, other people know about these things, but I want to share it with you because it is mint. If I was to uh, write down all the things that I would want to find at a beach camping spot, and if I could get someone, because I'm hopeless at drawing or painting, if I get someone to paint that very image, this particular venue would be it. And I actually think it surpasses even my imagination. And I do have a big imagination. First of all, when you leave the main road, which is surrounded by cane fields, which is great, you then turn onto a gravel road, come to a gate, open the gate, and from then on in, it becomes an adventure all by itself. You can only get here in a four wheel drive. And um, when I came through, there was quite a few mud puddles. So it was like mini river crossings, not that deep, but it was great fun. And you do need to be a little bit aware of your spatial aware of the caravan if you're pulling a caravan or a trailer, because if you cut too short, obviously you'll cut too short and then the trailer may get a pinstripe or even a dent. As for the area, it's fantastic. There's plenty of room. I think while I was here, there's probably been about steady 15 campers here and they're a mix of tents, camper trailers, few caravans, so it's, it's a real mix. Probably not a good idea in this area for swimming, uh, only because we're now in the zone part of Queensland that can have crocodiles, saltwater crocodiles, or any crocodiles are not great, so don't need to look for trouble. So it's kind of like the beginning of the Wit Sundays, but I don't think they call it this the Wit Sundays. Would I recommend this place? 100% this place is mint. Uh, in fact, I'd probably put it definitely in the top three that I've seen in Australia so far. And I've been to South Australia, New South Wales, Victoria, and now Queensland. Well, you've got to check this place out. It is just so good. Both the museum and the, uh, the view over the plains themselves, that was definitely well worth recommending, well worth doing. Museum was great, absolutely state of the art. What they do is they give you an iPod headset and as you're walking through the museum, the indicators, you don't know what's happening, but the, all the technology 
clicks into your iPod and starts talking to you about what you're looking at. Here I am, an Australian Stockman Hall of Fame. Absolutely superb. I've already done the interactive uh, tour and I've seen the video. That was great. I'm just about to go and see the show. Definitely heavily recommend this. Would be one of the best productions I've seen in the world. Enjoy the Thank show. You. Thank you. Just pop you up here. Whoop, there we go. All right. Now that'll be a lot easier on my back. Um, which foot first, mate? Oh, okay. Let's get that one done. Get the rocks out of there. I've got my saddle, I've got my saddle box, uh, which protects the horse from the saddle and protects the um, saddle from the horse a bit as well. It goes on first, just like. Uh oh. <laughs> okay. Come on, mate. You need to get up. Let's go. Come on. Up you get. Come on. Come on. Oh. Hey, hey. <laughs> That's working. Uh, Brahmins here these days, men and the girls. You know, they bought the Brahmins over from America back in 1933, so they've been here quite a while now. And I think the main reason they brought them over is their great resistance to the hot weather. They do very well in the hotter climate. So, you know, Northern Australia here uh, really suits the Brahmin cattle. Now, if you have a better look at the way Barney's set up, uh, all that poppy skin underneath him, that's not for him to grow into, that's actually the cooling system. Rather than run you through a series of videos, I'll give you a handful of snaps of the actual museum and uh, hopefully you'll get the appreciation of what it's all about. One thing I will say is the black box pictured here never was black, so there's something for you. Miss of me not to film this guy. This is the guy that uh, called Banjo. He stands out the front of Age of Dinosaurs Museum. Uh, pretty sharp teeth, and apparently these teeth in like sharks when the uh, when one falls out fairly quickly, another one grows through. So yeah, bit of a beast. And uh, what he does with these claws, these claws, he and uh, whatever he's going to do, uh, consume or kill, he hugs. And these, these razors actually dig into the animal he's trying to kill and the more it fights the deeper it gets until eventually uh, they succumb. Uh, good old banjo, age of dinosaurs. Here our energetic tour guide Melanie is explaining the larger imprints are the dinosaurs, a particular dinosaur as it's moving up through the valley. At any one point in time they will always have three feet on the ground. So this is our death in a billabong gallery. Um, the idea with this gallery is to recreate 
essentially what one of our dig sites would look like 95, 98 million years ago. And that's just after the animal has died. So this is actually based off the specimen of Matilda. And what essentially happens is when one of these animals die, um, the predators drag away the neck, they drag away the tail, um, the lighter specimens of the animal, and water essentially scatters the rest of the bones. Um, these bones have been bleached by time in the sun. Um, and we also notice that animals have been walking through this area as well. So we've recreated several sauropod trackways. A lot of the time when these sauropods die, their brothers and sisters and herd mates actually just walk straight over the top of them. And with Matilda, fondly enough, we actually have her shoulder blades or her scapulas crushed from when she's been stepped on from another sauropod. We've also got several other trackways based off the sites from Lark Quarry. Um, things like our Australovenator trackway or our large theropod trackways, our Scardipus made by small Silurosaur dinosaurs, a little theropod that ate insects, but also our Wintonopus, which are some of our plant-eating dinosaurs. Okay, here I am at the very bottom of the age of dinosaurs. Uh, this is a self-guided tour. When you get the, uh, when you pay for your ticket, you get a little uh, QR code. Click that and it'll actually guide you through every little part. I've opted not to do that, but um, I'll just give you a brief one down. Over my shoulder, you can see a couple of pretty nasty, not nasty, but pretty ferocious looking beasts. And uh, they're of the time, of the period that we're talking about. Um, the area is called Jump Rock or Jump Up Rock, which is oh, <laughs> the area is called Jump Jump Rock or Jump Up Rock, and uh, basically what it is, it's the uh, the rock will sit at the very top, and then the uh, the wind and the erosion and everything will eat eat off the very bottom of it, and then what will happen was that will collapse, and then roll down, and you'll see across there all the boulders that are formed, and that's from this exact thing, the erosion. The weight becomes too much, it falls down and then rolls as far as it can on the hill and uh, it'll sit amongst the trees. This is 30 million, 30 million years old, this area, and where they're doing the dig is 90 million years old. So, pretty old dinosaurs. I'm following the water tractor out to the fire. That's Ben on the tractor and he's offered to help me uh, find it and set up the fire. Very exciting. When I was talking to Ben and he told me that the burn was probably going to be off, apart from being disappointed I was intrigued because he said I'll just do one more test and he wasn't joking, he's very serious about it. Apparently the way the wind blows will dictate which paddocks get burned. In this particular paddock, paddock it was meant to be southwest coming in and I think it ended up being a southwest and this is how he tested it. Just grabbed some dirt from the ground and as he dropped it you can see the, the dirt is coming this way almost behind me. I don't know whether you can see that. And that dictated which paddocks they would burn. Very good Ben. It wasn't long and looking at the drone I could see the fire had already started and was slowly starting to creep toward me. Timing wise I'm not quite sure but it may have been five or ten minutes later. Again according to the drone the fire was definitely starting to get enraged and head toward me. Now standing by the road, I could definitely start to see nearby smoke and flames and hear some of the fire. As the fire got closer, it was hard to tell just how near or how far it was. Although I could definitely start to feel some warmth coming from the bush. At this stage the flames were now clearly visible and breaking through and showing themselves within metres of where I was standing. 
and you could start to really feel the intense heat. Now I remembered how one of the guys, the contractors, now put on special As if out of nowhere and very casually, I think it was Ben walks along and sets the light the part of the cane. So the cane will then burn back on the side. The heat was absolutely intense. Okay, what they've done here is yesterday or last night when they did the burn, they made a track through there. Just get a, got a tractor and this big drill kind of thing, just sort of burrow down and push the cane either side. Now this morning what they're doing is they're just picking up that cane, which is uh, probably of lesser quality since it's been tumbled down, I'm not sure. They'll think they're gonna do two runs and that'll clear the track and then we'll uh, Hopefully jump in the uh, harvester and go and really check it out. that off in a yeah. yeah we'll go to a siding now siding yeah yeah i can pit in the ground yep. back up to and roll them off and roll another set on there. The cane of the Burdekin is one of the heaviest in Australia because they irrigate all, all year round. And uh, that's happy days for those guys because you get paid tonnage, billable, billable tonnage they call it. I think he said they're getting 70 tonnes per acre. That's in the old school.
as every week, there you have it. Now, now that's my opinion of the top three places in Queensland. It does exclude up the very top, which is Cape York. But I love those three places and uh, it's a little bit like blue jeans, black jeans. This is my favourites. Hopefully that'll help you. Now, if you found the video useful, helpful and or entertaining, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already subscribed, come on. And if you think the video is worth sharing, I'd appreciate it. Till next time, this is Paul Will Drive, signing off.